Welcome to the Love the Star podcast. I'm Bobby Bell, Dallas Cowboys insider for 105 through the fan of Dallas. Joined as always by former Super Bowl winning NFL scout Brian Broaddus. He is now the co-host of the G-Bag Nation, 2 to 7 p.m. Central, Monday through Friday on 105 through the fan of Dallas. He is also the pre- and post-game co-host on the Dallas Cowboys radio network. Brian, how are you doing today? Doing well, Robert. Thank you. Big week for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Big week for the Detroit Lions. Big week for Jimmy Johnson going in the room yes. of honor. So a lot of good things happening on a Saturday night in Dallas. Absolutely. There's a good chance that the loudest ovation in the history of that stadium will be heard when Jimmy Johnson gets introduced. I would I would say I would say you're I I think you're I think you're on to something. If I think if you had to lay odds on it, they would be really, really strong ones. Which I you know, we're up in the press box typically. I am gonna be tempted, I think, at the two minute warning in the second quarter, just go down to the I wanna be standing in the bowl area i want to go down there and just kind of hear how loud things get if you are not in the stadium for this uh ring of honor ceremony you are not out of luck you will get the chance to watch it espn has announced that they're going to cover the ring of honor ceremony in its entirety um so good move by espn for all the fans who are at home for this one brian there are some questions you got something else on that no i really uh, bobby just you know we do the halftime show at the brad champ uh yeah a radio booth and it's open air so zip on down the hall with us oh and stand in the radio booth and you can you can see it open air yeah yeah there we go that's perfect so brian in this game uh we've had questions all week about tyron smith's availability yep. the practice report comes out he is listed as uh officially questionable in this one but it's sounding like he should be available to play in this game yeah uh it i was uh I was doing uh, my show on 105.3 The Fan uh, this afternoon and had actually three different guys <laughs> text me that Tyron Smith was going to play in this football game. So good news for the Dallas Cowboys that Tyron is uh, healthy enough and ready to play. And, and, you know, it's something where Edoga had struggled so much against Miami where it was stuff where – it felt like he was just completely missing assignments. Like, hey, you know, you're supposed to take Bradley Chubb. Like, yeah. this is your guy here. And those were those sorts of issues. Is that what they missed more than anything else? Maybe with Tyron Smith is just the level of communication and the continuity. Yeah, I, I think, it, you know, the metrics will tell you and the film will tell you, too, that Adoga, the physical part of it was not the problem in this football game. The mental mistakes that he made, and they were at crucial times during the game. And that's where I think that the the fan who watches it are like, you know, and, and good. It, it's good to have uh, Tyron Smith back. Don't get me wrong. But I think they had some issues at, at, you know, at center. I think some of the issues at center were even worse than what was going on at, at, uh, at left tackle. So um, Adoga, was he great? No. Was he the reason why you lost that football game? I don't think you could say that either. But having Tyron Smith back, I think, will help the, the situation quite a bit as we all – we all know it will. No Jonathan Hankins in this one. He is still yeah. uh, another week or so away. Yeah, uh, you I've got some on that, too. I've got some on Hankins. You know, the yep. thing about it is there's another man that's 330 pounds, and you're talking about lateral agility and some quickness and being able to anchor down and play on one, you know, not play on one leg. And that's the problem that they're running into right now is they're trying to figure out, though, how to get him completely healthy so he's not a one-legged football player. And he's just not there right now. You know, you're right. Maybe another week uh, they can get him back into the mix. Maybe, uh, you know, depending on what happens in this game, maybe you don't see him until the playoffs, you know, until you absolutely have to either, you know, you get to host or you get to have to go on the road likely to uh, to Tampa. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're dealing with a man with it's, – it's a 330-pound man that needs to be able to anchor and he needs to have both feet underneath him. And right now he just doesn't have it. And as the week progressed, things started looking increasingly more unlikely uh, for Rico Dowdle. Yeah. Um, he, he didn't start the week. He started as a limited participant. Then he was a DNP on Wednesday, DNP again on Thursday when the practice report comes out. Ultimately, Rico Dowdle is on the list as a out in this game. So he will not be available. Malik Davis is out of practice squad elevations. So that means here is your opportunity, Deuce Vaughn, to be the guy behind Tony Pollard. This will be Deuce Vaughn and Hunter Lipke. Um, do you think that this will mainly be just a Pollard and Lipke thing, or do you think Deuce Vaughn will actually get some run in this game? You know what? It's funny because Deuce Vaughn plays absolutely no special teams for you, so you're going to yeah. lose. You're going to lose something there uh, to get Malik Davis on. They'd have to let somebody go, right? You know, or is 
is uh, Rico Dattle's injury long enough where or severe enough that they could put him on IR? You know, and I, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to figure out, you know, what the IR rules are when it comes to playoff. You know, would you lose him for, you know, would you lose him for the the playoff game as well because of the four weeks this week? Next week, and then you know now you're going into the playoffs. Would you lose him for two games in the playoffs? You know if you had to. So, um, you know they, it, it just depends on if they don't want to put somebody on the street uh, right now that they might. But yeah, that 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 running back that dresses the extra back, Rico Dowdle, is that guy plays a lot of special team snap. And and I, you know, I don't I don't see where I don't see where Deuce Vaughn fits in that right now. I, and they don't have packages for Deuce Vaughn, you know, I don't believe, in the offense. So if they're dressing him, I believe it's just as an emergency. You're going to see a lot of Tony Pollard and, and probably a lot of Hunter Lipke if if they just dress Deuce Vaughn in this game as well. You know, we talk about specific packages, you know, they're there for Deuce Vaughn potentially or, or whatever else, and, and some of that calls. One of the guys that we've heard a lot of calls for, for, for several weeks now, people saying, figure out a way, packages, get him up to yeah, number two, whatever else. It's easy to do. Trey Lance is, is, the, is the guy that I wanted to ask you about really quickly. Trey Lance has, has gotten a lot of discussion. So I just want to throw out uh, nothing relevant to this Detroit game. It's just a, a, a theory. If you go out there and you lose this game to the Lions, the, the division race is over. You're pretty much locked into the five. That's that's done and sealed. Start do you Lance start Trey Lance in week 18 against Washington? Well, I like what you're doing there. I really do. <laughs> I really do like what you're doing there, you know, and it, it give you a good opportunity to get a look at Trey Lance for sure. But yeah, if you're locked into the fifth seed, which I think they're right at, right at 80 something percent right now, it's pretty likely. Yeah. Then I think that, you know, starting Trey Lance would not be a bad option because it would keep Dak healthy and it would keep your backup quarterback healthy too, you know, but it might, you might want to get, you might want to get hell. I might make Dak the third quarterback and have Trey Lance as the backup. And if you went, if you went Cooper Rush the first half and Trey Lance the second half, you know, maybe you could work around that way. Yeah, and it's if you got Lance in some reps in the final week, mm -hmm. would you want it – like would it be a little bit of a waste to just say it's Lance with all the backups? Would you feel like, hey, I, I'd like to get some reps in there with CD and Lance. I'd like to get some reps in there where he's throwing to Cooks I, and Ferguson. Yeah, I don't know how much I'm playing CD Lamb in this game. You know, I mean, if we got to that point, we need to get through this Detroit game. You win this Detroit game, you got to keep fighting. I mean, you got to keep playing, right? You I mean, don't you? Don't you have yeah, to? You have to, you gotta see you have to, to the play end. till the very last week because you don't know what the Giants. The Giants could lay a big damn egg, and they're and everybody's playing at the same time. So you know, you beat the Lions and you beat the Commanders. Well, it's going to come down to who knows. I mean, Arizona's got some talented guys, but you know, we're we're. This would be this would be a, this would be a horrific loss for for Philadelphia if they were to lose the game to the Giants gave them a Giants gave them fits the other yeah. day in the game you know but could they could they do it you know at the Meadowlands uh, you know at that you know maybe maybe you know maybe they're playing for a little pride there at the end you know in Philadelphia not exactly playing great so yeah I don't I don't know I don't I don't I, don't, I mean. I would like to see if, if it came down to that they knew they were locked in the fifth, you know, maybe maybe you do give Cooper Rush some work and then give Trey Lance the rest of the game and you know, and Trey Lance knowing that he that's kind of how it's gonna play today. You're listening to the Love the Star Podcast. The Love the Star is an Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. All right, Brian, let's take a look at this Detroit Lions defense. We talked about the offense yesterday. Um when you look at the defense, there, there's a lot to really like about what Detroit does. Um, I'll tell you, one of the things that I came away with was I, I think this is going to be a day where if you want to throw some misdirection at this group, you'll have some success. Is that I yeah. felt like if you get Detroit going one way and and kind of move the other direction, just get some misdirection yeah. and get that defense flown, that you're able to take advantage of some big plays. We saw Minnesota do it a couple times. We've seen Chicago do it in different points. Um, I, I think that misdirection is a big player, but this is a good defense, specifically also if you're talking about kind of between the numbers. I think if there's some vulnerability, it might be those outside corners, outside the go. numbers. Everything yeah. else in between the hashes is pretty damn good for them. No, Bobby, I think you're dead on with this one. I, I, it's an aggressive front seven, and they like to attack the line of scrimmage. 
Uh, they like to bring pressure from the secondary. I've seen the safeties blitz uh, at various times during games. It's actually pretty impressive what Aaron Glenn's been able to do with that safety group. I think this is the best safety group that they've played against this year. Uh, that bring linebackers um, as well. Um, I mean, I I really do. Now, you know, I say best safety group. You know, San Francisco's got good safeties as well, but I, I think Buffalo. Okay, but I, I think these guys right here. When you start to talk about get, if you get lazy with the football, these guys will ball hawk it. I mean, yeah. they've got some guys that can that get in position. They tackle well. They blitz. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I stand by that. You know, I, I'd say the best, and maybe one of the top three. I should have probably, but I know watching no, no, the tape. These are definitely, hey, hey, out Malifano, Kirby Joseph. These are really good safeties. They're really good. They're really good safeties. And like I said, you get lazy throwing the football and think you can float one out there and them not get it. You're dead. You're dead wrong about that. They're going to play a lot of zone coverage. What's amazing about them, Bobby, is they've played zone coverage sixty-seven percent of their snaps. They've only given up five touchdowns playing zone coverage this year. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's the third fewest in the National Football League. But you're going to get some blitz. They're going to blitz on third down. That's their big down to come on. They're going to give you the split safety stuff that we've seen before in the past. It's about 39% of that. And they have about a 55% pressure rate when it comes to five or more rushers. So, you know, they're getting after you. Aiden Hutchinson is a really good football player, you know. And so he's going to kind of be the guy that's that's going to be the, the bell cow of, of the group. But uh, the linebackers make plays, the safeties make plays. Uh, the nickel, you know, I, I think the nickel when you when you really really study what the you know with Brian Branch. I mean, we all love Brian Branch, the rookie really out of play. Alabama. He was a safety at Alabama, but he's playing as the nickel, and you know, and so all of a sudden he can cover, he can run, he can blitz. You know, they they they're going to see a lot of secondary pressure, and from you know from the safeties and the nickel, as I mentioned. You're going to see linebacker pressure too, but how can you not watch the Dolphin tape and not try? You know what I'm saying? So the cornerbacks, as you mentioned, I think Cam, uh, Cameron Sutton's the guy I would go after. He's yep. number one in this game. I kind of feel like that he's a guy that gets a little lost in coverage when he has to play on the back end. Yeah, I, I think that's dead on. And and Branch specifically, let's let's talk a little bit more about him because he is such a flexible and a unique player and. I think can can be a, a you know he's somebody who plays inside so much you know yeah. as pretty much that's a spot that CD Lamb who's played so much of his time in the slot that could be one of the better players I think Lamb has seen in the slot this year. Oh, is Brian. It, yeah, I, there you go. I mean, now if you're to me, about, I think this this yeah. is a good day to keep CD Lamb outside for me. Is that no, I I, I no don't want to keep him yeah. inside. Of, I know he plays the majority of his snaps in the slot, but I'd like to keep him outside this game. Yeah, I would. I would definitely. I would definitely look at Lamb more on the outside and again and try and get him on Sutton number one I, I just feel like that there's a struggle there so you know it, it, again it's about Branch the thing about that I worry most about the Detroit uh, defense I do worry about Aiden Hutchinson because I think he's a player I think you have to block him through the echo of the whistle he, he just the minute you let him go and the play's still going he gets more pressures and sacks by effort and he, but he's a talented player. Don't get me wrong with the movement and all that. But like the the play's breaking down, the quarterback's running around. It's there. He's holding the ball, holding the ball, holding the ball. And here comes Aiden Hutchinson, get a sack or get a, a pressure. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's 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 winning a lot of times because he's just outworking you to get to the football. Yeah, motor sacks. Unbelievable. Yeah, that way. You're right. All right. Now, what talk about what they have? Uh, you know, we, we've talked to a little bit about the linebackers there. I know you, you mentioned Anzalone a little bit yesterday. Yeah. We can talk about them again uh, some more here in a sec. Um, and and they, they've got really good linebacker depth. Some of their guys behind even the starters are, are good contributors. Rodriguez yeah. is a good player, I think. Um, but when you look at what they provide on the defensive line interior, what kind of challenges is that going to present for Dallas in this game? Yeah, that's you know that's you're you're looking at a, a couple of. Aiden Hutchinson, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll see. You know, I mean, I mean, how they how they choose to handle him. Uh, well, you know, John Kaminsky is a guy, kind of a he plays opposite. Uh, he's not as talented. He's got straight ahead speed. He doesn't get much movement or you know, much wiggle. He plays hard all the time. He closes well the position. The power, you know, kind of a smart, savvy, kind of a flow to the game with the kind of a guy he is. 
Where they're inside, though, is Benito Jones and then Isaiah Bugs are the defensive tackles. And Jones is not the tallest guy. He's like 6'1", but he's super wide. These are 330-pound guys that they have playing inside. Yeah. So they do a lot of dirty work for the Lions. And these guys anchor down against double teams. They hustle. They got some sneaky speed, you know, moving along the line of scrimmage. Bugs is like Jones, like I say, massive guy. And he does a good job of keeping the feet moving, head down, and locate the football. So these guys both have some power and kind of be some hard guys to move. But what they like to do is they like to rush, they like to push the pocket and then bring a linebacker with them. So now you're kind of occupied trying to deal with all that. And then they're rushing, like I say, Angeloni uh, is uh, is one of these guys that, uh, that uh, you know, that he's 26 pressures. You know, it's the second most pressures of any off-ball linebacker in, in the league. So, excuse me, not the second most. He's tied with the lead league uh, is with the pressure. I thought it was second. He's actually the first or tied for one with 26. So, here you go. Space player coverage. You got to account for this guy all, all, all the time. And they're, they're linebackers. Campbell. Barnes is coming back from an injury right now. Uh, he has had a shoulder injury. So, he's missed some time. But he should be back this week. But... Yeah, it's a, it's a good group of uh, defense with the exception of what they've got going at the corners. How big of a game or, or how important is it, especially when we talk about the linebackers and the way they kind of rush them and the different things they do, how big of a game or, or how important is it to see Tyler Biotis have a bounce back in this game specifically? Well, it's, it's huge for him. And, you know, we were talking about Deuce Vaughn and how much would do, you play Deuce Vaughn. In a group that really blitzes linebackers, are you trusting Deuce Vaughn to play in these games? Right. You know? That's that's the biggest question you have to ask yourself with the activation of Deuce Vaughn. To me, to me, it's in this game, it's almost worth it to try and find the roster spot. I'm just, you know, I, I just think you having Malik Davis and having Pollard as blockers, I mean, yeah, you can get away. We saw a little bit of what happens with uh, and I know I'm circling back. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get to the center. No, no, but, you're good. But we saw we saw Hunter Lipke. There's been times where Honey Lipke has been really good, and then there's times where Honey Hunter Lipke has been really bad. Yeah. And so, how much do you really trust? You know, the one thing you can do is trust Davis. You can trust Pollard. You know, you you could really trust Rico Dowdle. So, I don't know how much I want to play Deuce Vaughn in this game, knowing if I'm if I'm Aaron Glenn, and every time I see Deuce Vaughn on the field, I'm thinking I'm going to blitz because I'm thinking he can't pick it up. Yeah. You know, I think he's just. You know, maybe Dallas gets screen packages for him, and they, you know, Dak gets the ball outside. But you know, we'll see that. But you're the the thing. Yes, they need a bounce back game from Tyler Biotis. The previous four or five games, Tyler Biotis has played pretty well. Yeah, but he he was not good against the Dolphins. He just was not good, and so they need him with those big inside guys to be able to kind of to shoulder the load. All right, Brian. So uh, it is the Jimmy Johnson Ring of Honor induction game. The Cowboys uh, obviously need to win out. They still need some help in order to win the NFC East. So uh, after taking a look at what the Lions have on offense and what they've got on defense and what's ahead of them, uh, what is your prediction for this game? Do you have a prediction Cowboys? first? I'm, I'm interested to hear what you're. Oh, say. are you? Are you? You're, you're. You're trying to ride the fence, aren't you? So you're. No, I, I'm about, interested okay. because I'm, I'm. I'm really want to pick Dallas in this game. I know I picked Miami last week. I think there's going to be some difficult, but Dallas. We keep talking about Dallas at home. You know, Dallas is one of the. And if you if you listen and you believe in the Vegas, the models that they play, they've got Dallas winning this football game by by you know five points or so. So, I don't know. I'm interested to see what you're going to say because I'm gonna. I, I might I might go opposite you. I I believe in in the impact of Dallas at home. They they've scored. Yeah. No fewer than 30 points in every home game this year. The offense still hasn't put up 30 points one time on the road this year. Now, they had 40 against the Giants and 33 against the Panthers, but there were defensive and special teams touchdowns in there. The offense has not put up 30 points in a road game this year, and 30 is the minimum they've put up in every home game. So I'm going to believe in the Cowboys to score 38-plus every single week when they're at home, regardless of the defense, regardless of the team, because it's just the way they play when they're there. So I've got the Cowboys in this one, 42-31. to 31. Ryan, Ooh. it is up to you now. It's up to me now. Mm -hmm. I, like the, I, I, I think the, it's going to have a similar feel to it as the Seahawks game did. I, I kind of feel like I think you're right there as well. I, I got Dallas winning this one 30 to 24 is what I have here. So uh, hopefully Dallas will not uh, uh, get subjected to a running game that just slams the ball out of the whole day and they have no answers for that. But their offense 
finds a way to get things done. I like the matchups on the outside with the receivers. I think you got to find a way to block these guys, and and they will. So Dallas those Dallas gets their thirty points, and Detroit gets their twenty four. So uh, uh, Dallas gets their eleventh victory, which uh, keeps them uh, active in playing for the following week against the Commanders. And then uh, your Mike McCarthy will have his eleventh victory, and then he could talk about playoff seating in the post game. And uh, they'll have won it for Jimmy Johnson, and that'll be the important thing. You are listening to the Love the Star podcast. The Love the Stars and Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian, it is now time for our Dean Julia Love of the Star mailbag. This is where we turn things over to our dear, sweet listeners for their thoughts, their questions. And the first one right out of the gate, I like this one because uh, it's thinking outside the box. It's trying to approach things a little bit differently. And it's also a guy that I know uh, you've discussed uh, today recently as a guy who maybe is, is hitting a little bit of a wall. Mike Hill is asking, could Osa play some right end on early downs with two bigger defensive tackles inside and Micah at linebacker? Yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that about Osa. Because I'm – didn't Osa wear out a little bit last year about this time? Were we in week 13, He definitely did his rookie 14? year. I can't remember if last year we had a yeah. – but I know he did his rookie year. I know his rookie year. It just seemed like that he kind of – he had so much momentum, and then all of a sudden he just – you know, things started kind of slowing down. And I wonder if we're to that point now. You know, he's he, he wasn't particularly – good the buffalo nor the this last one which is the uh, first for him he had been the most consistent i know he he had been for like 14 weeks he'd been really really good they need him to get back i i think that they they've got enough to me the guy the guy that i like that they don't play enough is dante fowler fowler's the guy i mean i fowler playing it on the edge he's a He's a veteran guy. He's seen a lot of this. He's he's pretty savvy playing the run. You can't, you know, he when he the only problem with him is when he lines up offsides. You know, but <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of feel like that that playing him in, in some of these edge situations. If you want to play Mike as an off ball linebacker, which Micah was fine in the off ball linebacker stuff he did the other day. So I think I would instead of moving Osa, I think I would play Fowler on the edge a little bit more. Maybe, you know, Golston, maybe Golston was an edge, but I, I wouldn't, I would play, I would play Fowler is what I would do. I, I, I like Osa and I, I like the outside the box thinking. I, I'm, oh, I'm I do too. I do too. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I'd rather keep Osa on the interior. I just don't, I don't think that his, I, I don't think he's got the, the, the bend to be able to, to right. you know, run that art right, uh, on right. an edge. And so that, right. that's the only, I think you neutralize some of his ability that he has on the interior, but yeah, he's probably hitting a little bit of fatigue as, as yeah. a lot of guys seem to be right now. Play a lot of snaps, this, man. Yeah, absolutely. This question from Brett Logan, and this is more just kind of uh, a, a fun thing to, to consider any chance. Jimmy Johnson gives this team some post uh, post season motivation with a speech before the lions game. I think that could go a long way to help get the ship pointing in the right direction. Moving forward. Brian, would you ask if you're Jerry, would you say, Hey Jimmy, why don't you just go step in the locker before this game and address the team? Would you ask him to do it? I think I'd ask Mike McCarthy first. You know, I all right. Think if, Mike, if, if Mike, I'd ask if, Mike. If, 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 if you're Mike, do you ask him to address the team? Just sure. Like, hey, come here, give the guys a pep talk. Absolutely. Do you, do you think Jimmy would love that? I think Jimmy would enjoy it. Yes, I do. I, I think the players would appreciate it. I, I think the players There's would. There's probably like a lot of players that don't know who the hell Jimmy Johnson is. You know what? <laughs> they, I, I'm sure they've understood. They have to understand the magnitude oh, no. of just because yes. of this specific yes. situation. Yes. So I think they're all going to have some extra juice in this game because the crowd's going to feel it. Yeah. The crowd's going to have this extra energy to it, and I think that's going to transfer onto the players, yeah. and they're definitely going to have an understanding of that. Yeah, I, I totally, totally be where I'm If from. I was Mike McCarthy, I would ask, maybe you can ask Jimmy to speak the night before to the team. You know? Yeah. Like at just the hotel, the yeah, team. at the hotel, good. yeah, just speak the night before, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that that could be a, uh, a a fun way to do this thing. Uh, let's, uh, we'll finish up here with this question from Ray, and it's an interesting one because the, the MVP race has been so wide open, uh, but if Dak finishes the season strong over these last two weeks, do you think he can still win, win the MVP, Brian, or did he lose that when he lost those two road games? I tell you what, man. I my vote's going to go to uh, Matthew Stafford. What's going on with the Rams? Wow! <laughs> I tell you, 
tell man. me one man the Rams flew across the country for a, a one o'clock kick, and and they to and took the Ravens to the mat, and everybody's seeing the Ravens how great they are. Yeah, nobody wants to play the Rams right now. No, no but let me tell you this though. Nope, you know, nobody I, wants to pay, play the Los Angeles Rams or the Buffalo Bills right now. Nobody does. Nobody does. You're right about that. I would think that this would be a great opportunity for somebody other. This is this is where Hill, McCaffrey, somebody else could – this is where somebody else could come in and steal the MVP. Yeah. You know, this is where position. all of a sudden – it's all of a sudden the quarterbacks are not playing great, but here's somebody, you know – Here's somebody. Hey, the question I have for you: Could Puka Nakua take the offensive rookie of the year over your guy down in Houston? Only, only because Stroud's been hurt, uh, yeah. and, and Nakua has been really impressive all year. Yeah. But I mean, what Stroud has done has been—it's incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. I'll tell you the award that I keep looking for now is the fact that Kirk Cousins gets hurt, Justin Jefferson misses most of the season, now T.J. Hawkins is out. That the Vikings are still somehow in oh, yeah. playoff contention. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I think Kevin O'Connell deserves Coach of the Year. Just well, like you, so you didn't like my, you didn't like my Matthew Stafford for the MVP. I, I think it's I think it's again a creative. I love creative out of the box thinking. I had not even considered it. And look, Matthew Stafford. I thought his arm had fallen off. I thought he was done. Yeah. And he's been impressive this year. So so no doubt about it. All right, that does it for us here today on the Love the Star podcast. Your uh, voice is falling off. That man, I, it's done. I, yeah. It's a, it's completely gone. It's yep. wasted. Uh, I'm sure Mike McCarthy is going to give me uh, hell about it when we interview him. Yeah. Uh, but that does it for us here on the Love the Star podcast. We'll be back with you again next week, uh, hopefully with some some great audio to play from the Jimmy Johnson Ring of Honor induction ceremony. For Brian Broaddus, I'm Bobby Belt. We will talk to you guys again later. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.